going on, everyone? Thank you so very much for tuning in here. This is your Yankee Mad Dog Messiah here with you. And, of course, I'm going to give you a quick Monday Night Raw review. Of course, um, I know I'm a little bit late doing this because, obviously, you know, earlier today, I did the uh, Yankee Talk podcast. So, uh, took a little bit of a break from the YouTube. And now we are talking some WWE and um, let me just say this about Monday Night Raw last night. Um, if the rumors are true that Vince McMahon was backstage, and understandable why he would be there, because Titan Towers to Hartford is a two-hour drive. But... There were reports that he did make some changes uh, via phone uh, before the show started. So I don't know if it was like in the morning or in the afternoon. But he must have had an aneurysm. Because the lack of input. Because his lack of input made this episode great. And to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about my top three matches Last night for Monday Night Raw. We had a mixed bag of good shit. To say the very least. We had some solid promo work. Entertaining forward movement for some stories. And we had some high quality and good old fashioned wrestling. Something that I like. Um... About Monday Night Raw. And I'll tell you about my top matches. Of the night. Of course you know. Unless a cage match. Is lying. Kevin Owens and Guther. Never had. A one on one match. In their careers. And then. This impromptu match was made. Last night. And really a first time ever match. Between these two being thrown together in 30 seconds. I know people be like, oh, oh yeah, that should be your dislike. Nope. How can you fucking say that after this match? Seriously, man. Because first, what was the basis of this match? As much as we despise... This chop because it assumes there was a 20 minute gap in the show. That was just there to be filled. It actually made sense. So Gunther calls out Kevin Owens' temper and lack of discipline. And KO went full hothead. And demanded that they march to the ring right then. And let's settle it. Still... It was a very good match, but KO sold it really well. And the instant nature of this also excused Matt Riddle being pissed later about the interference, but not being out there to back up his friends. Then the match itself was magnificent. Like, seriously, this is a match that you have to watch if you missed Monday Night Raw last night. Because... It's impossible to do Gunther and Owens Justice as the Intercontinental Championship. Well, well, the Intercontinental Champion, I should say, battered KO all over the ring. But he couldn't keep the prize fighter down. Because Owens came back and finally had Gunther on the ropes. Only for Imperium to get involved. Uh, with Sami Zayn triggering a brawl that allowed... The ring general to do something he has it in many of his matches. Grab a roll up from behind for the pit. And the fact that Gunther. Who has decimated opponents. With this blunt force. And pinned them with ease. Needed to rely on a schoolboy. After a distraction to escape with a win. It says a lot about Owens, but it's still a win for the Intercontinental Champion, and I have to say it was the right call. So, you definitely have to put this 
as a top match of the night. Now, when it comes to Seth Rollins and the um, Judgment Day, let me just say it like this. We got to talk about the segment first because if WWE was trying to get you to think about Damian Priest as a solo babyface because they were teasing something happening with the Judgment Day last night. What better way to do it than the leader of his group giving him a one-eyed, or a side-eye, I should say, during a promo battle with Seth Rollins. And, you know, Damian Priest and Seth Rollins, they draw a bit in the ring to open this show as is customary for WWE but Damien's lines rubbed running uh buddy Finn Balor a bit wrong a few times you know Priest called Rollins a deserving champion who had beaten all comers with Balor who lost to Seth in the World Heavyweight Championship semifinals Casting a glance at him both times. Then, as Rollins upped the ante by asking Priest to leave the rest of the Judgment Day in the back, Damien responded that he didn't need a Rhea Ripley. He didn't need a Dominic Mysterio. We all know Rhea Ripley has her issues. Dominic Mysterio is about to get into a few with Cody Rhodes. Or Finn... To beat Seth Rollins. And that gave this. Look. For Finn Balor. But the entire episode. It served well to establish Priest. As an honorable heel. To some extent. At least in that moment. Allowing fans to see him. As willing to fight. His own battles. Even if it ruffles his stalemate's feathers. Now, the match itself, I have to say, was the second best match of the night. But, it's telling you that WWE is leaning into Damian Priest as a player on Raw these days. And, he got awarded that last night with a class performance against Seth Rollins. And... This was for the World Heavyweight Championship. You knew that Seth Rollins was going to win this match. Because Seth Rollins is making his first title defense. Just nine days after winning it. And if he had lost the championship belt. It would have sent shock raves to the WWE Universe. So this was a really good TV main event. You know with Rollins doing his usual routine. And Priest up in the game by pulling out some really seeing offense. Including a cyclone kick, top row paracarana, and a headlock driver. But despite the fury of attacks, Rollins was resisted. And he beats Damian Priest with the stop. And what's interesting was Finn Balor attempted to interfere. Now, that's not surprising. And when Damien saw him, he wasn't happy about it. And that could factor into some dissension down the line for the Judgment Day. And after what we saw last night, you could almost envision a babyface priest challenging Gutha for the Intercontinental Championship. I can see that happening. And maybe he could be the guy that dethrones Gunther after Gunther breaks the Honky Top Man's record. But let's hope that a ways off, given the chemistry of the Judgment Day. And one other match that I do want to get into and... It is Ricochet and Shinsuke Nakamura. 
which I have to say was my third best match of the night here. I mean, it, it was a showcase match. Because what you did was you sent out two really good wrestlers to entertain fans. Now, the stakes are not huge here. It's all about momentum and bragging rights. Because this was a match because two of these guys are in the Money in the Bank ladder match. So, they're telling the WWE Universe. And I'm talking about, you know... All of the people down there, the, um, what is it that I'm trying to come up with? I got a brain freeze here. Um, creative. They just want you to watch the match and enjoy it. And sure enough, Ricochet and Nakamura did that for the fans. There was a lot of offense and counter-offensive moves as, you know, they would do before Bronson Reed... Ran in for a DQ. What does Bronson Reed do? He lays out both guys. In impressive fashion. And. This all was set up backstage. When Reed chatted with Ricochet. And Nakamura. Claiming that he should be in the Money in the Bank match. Because. He beat Ricochet the week prior. To lose it to Shinsuke. Last week. And that loss came. After dominating the entire match. We talked about that last week, right? It was clear that Bronson wasn't going to just accept his only defeat on the main roster. And it was going to keep him out of a signature WWE match. And this was a good move to have Reed batter two one-out superstars. Even though it was a cop-out finish. And it was a match that deserved to have a finish. So overall, 8 to 8.5 out of 10. This was a very good Monday Night Raw last night. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens Friday on SmackDown. I really hope uh, SmackDown on Friday is better than last week. Because last week I went on a rant on that. But nevertheless, though, a lot of good wrestling on this show. Uh, last night, and uh, that's pretty much going to do it, guys. So, um, yeah. Until then, it's your Yankee Mad Dog Messiah. I'm out. See you guys later. Fuck the haters. Fuck the trolls. I'm not even going to say his name because, hey, he was backstage. But I will say the one name. Fuck Joey Janela. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Be-ya, be-ya. Yankee Mad Dog Messiah, signing off.